Good day, all. My name is John Semmel. I'm the Director of Information Technology for Microsoft Resources. And uh, one of my specialties is multi-site coordination for BIM and other architectural products. So today we're going to be talking about BIM 360 design. So this is BIM 360 design is one of the BIM 360 products. Uh, this is just a small sampling of some of the products currently available. Uh, if you were in our webinar on Tuesday, my colleague Nick Marchak talked about BIM 360 docs. There will be a little bit of overlap in the discussion because uh, BIM 360 design relies heavily on docs, but we'll be talking about other features uh, as well, which are relevant to BIM 360 design. So docs is considered the core component and is a document management system and also manages the authoritative copy of project data. BIM 360 design primarily adds Revit and Civil 3D collaboration to Docs. There are other feature, other uh, options like BIM 360 Coordinate, which helps with constructability reviews, clash detection, change visualization. BIM 360 Build, which is for on-site construction management, punch lists, issues, RFIs, and submittals. But today we're going to focus on design. When Revit was first design, uh, it was only supposed to work on a local area network <clears throat> or a LAN like in your office. And this very quickly became a problem for a lot of architecture firms, which realized very quickly that having multiple people working in the model at the same time was a huge advantage. And they wanted to be able to do this across different offices, different locations. So in the early days, the options were a little bit limited. People would try to use FTP, maybe email. They might use specialized services like Hightail. Uh, I remember fussing with web dev. That was fun. Uh, there was also some people tried to use Riverbed, which is a WAN accelerator, to try and speed up the links between offices. But all of these attempts to solve the issue ran into very similar problems. It was very slow. There was lots of data being sent back and forth. It was difficult to coordinate. Uh, there was too much latency. And ultimately, it just didn't really work very well for having people working on the model simultaneously in real time. Autodesk addressed the solution starting in 2015 by releasing what was then known as Collaboration for Revit. And they have been constantly updating since then. And the current version, which is sometimes called next generation, is BIM 360 design. So some of the key features, hopefully, which we will be able to have time to review all today. It's fully integrated into Revit and Civil 3D. Uh, there is uh, uh, there is some options for working in AutoCAD, but it's not quite as integrated. Uh, the authoritative copy of the model is in the cloud. It is specifically at Amazon S3 East. There is also now a data center in Europe. So you have the option for using uh, a data center that is located in the US or in the EU. The performance is generally similar to working on a traditional LAN situation. It can be a little slower. It depends on the size of the models. But generally speaking, it's actually very close. It works anywhere that you have an internet connection. So it is available internationally. So even if you choose a data center that's Amazon S3 East, you can work in it in the EU. You can work in it in Asia, wherever you need to work. Um, you may see a little uh, less performance, but they are using uh, acceleration at Amazon to improve the ability to use this service internationally. Uh, it includes file sharing and versioning, which is very important. We'll see a little bit of that, and I believe Nick talked a little bit about that as well. The key here, obviously, is simultaneous multi-site coordination. So basically, you can have one person at a home office. You can have another person working on the same model at a different home office and another person working on site where they're doing construction. And all of this lets you modify the model in real time if that's what you want to do. There are also options where you can do issues, RFIs, markups. Uh, there are some construction management features included, which we'll talk about. Again, reviews, transmittals, issues. And design collaboration, which allows you to make snapshots 
and track changes over time. So in the back end, the way that the system works is that the M360 data is all being kept at the Amazon S3 servers. It's actually divided into two different data containers. One is that is the Revit collaboration container. So that's basically what Revit is going to interact with, and we'll see a little bit of that. And then the other, which some of you have seen already, is the BIM 360 docs. So that's a separate data container, and they are linked by what is known as the publish feature. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute as we go to our demonstration. So let's start real quick with Revit. So as you can see here, uh, I've opened up Revit 2021. We already have our recent models. And in fact, if you see here in the saved path, you can see that it refers to BIM 360. You can also access it BIM 360 by the BIM 360 tab on the left side. So this takes us to the projects. If you're working with multiple accounts, let's say, for example, your firm sets up their own site. Uh, but you may be working with a consultant or a contractor who has a separate site, you can use this to get access to a separate site. For today, we'll be working on our demo project. Uh, talk a little bit about, oops, sorry, hang on a second. Okay, so we're going to go to the project files. We'll go to architecture. And you can see here it's got the latest publish. We'll talk about that in a minute. And we can open the model and you'll see this is happening in real time. <clears throat> and there we are. So we're in the model. Everything works exactly the same as any other implementation of Revit. So when you're working you are actually working off of your local machine. What it does is it makes a local cached copy of this model. So if I needed to, I could actually go through Windows Explorer and find a fully functional RVT file that I could save if I need to. So I'm using my computer's CPU, I'm using my computer's graphics card, I'm using my computer's uh, uh, hard drive, and that makes it very fast working. So if you need to make changes, it's actually pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Everything works the same way that is, as it does when you're normally in Revit. So let's say we make a little change. Something nice and simple. Let's move those tables around. Let's go to collaborate. Synchronize to central. And again, you can just see in real time, that's how, how quickly it works. So when we're doing that, what is actually happening is you're making a change, which is then saved in the local model. When I hit sync with central, what it does is it transmits all the changes that I made to the authoritative copy at the Amazon S3 data center. Then the system will push out all the changes I made to every other user who is working on this model, and they're going to store it in that kind of local cache. So the other thing that happens when you hit Sync with Central is that it's going to incorporate any changes that were happening that you've downloaded in the background. So one bit of advice that we have is that you probably want to set a schedule to synchronize because you don't want multiple people trying to synchronize at the same time and you know everything gets a little out of order. So it's good to make sure that people are synchronizing fairly frequently, which you want to do with Revit anyway, but you also just want to make sure people are on a schedule so that they know they're not really overlapping. Now, I mentioned earlier the publish feature. So one thing about this, if we go into publish settings, we have the option to decide what we're going to publish. So one of the functions sometimes for publishing is that you may have someone who, like an owner, who does not have Revit or is not experienced with Revit or doesn't need to see everything. So you could create a set 
and maybe you decide the only thing you want them to see is some 3D views. They don't necessarily need to see floor plans or elevations. And there you go. So when you do a publish and you look at it in BIM 360 docs, you will only see uh, in that particular package or that particular version, you will only see the 3D views. And as I mentioned, there is a system which basically takes the data from the Revit container in the back end, and it will take the most recent synchronization with Central and copy it over to BIM 360 docs. So we're going to publish the latest, and it's going to take a moment. While I'm here, I'm just going to show you a real quick, nice little option. So you can see here, these are the different versions and the different dates. It tells me who synchronized. If you need to, uh, you can roll back to an earlier version. Just keep in mind, if I roll back to version 3, it's actually going to remove versions 4 and 5 from the system, and anyone who is currently working in the model can be orphaned. So the, the hot times that we've usually seen this is if there's some problems with the model and you need to roll back to a certain version, um, in which case we usually find that going back one or two versions gets you back to a openable copy, and from there you can clean up the model and edit it. So otherwise, again, everything is exactly the same as what you're normally used to working with Revit, all the same tools, all the same add-ins, all the same interoperability, everything is right there. So we can take a quick look at Civil 3D. So Civil 3D has recently added the ability to collaborate. And you just go to start, and again, in 360, you see the project. Oops. So the interface is basically the same. And uh, it does, when you're working with Civil 3D, it will have what's called file locking. And what that means is that if someone's working in a Civil 3D drawing, the system is going to know that someone's working in it, and they're going to prevent other people from saving to it. So now we can take a look at the BIM 360 side. And again, um, people who are here on Tuesday uh, or have been in previous webinars will probably recognize this. So this up here is a module selector. Uh, sometimes it's called the waffle iron. So this project home. Uh, these are other modules which, we, which are uh, additional. So for the moment, we're just going to look at document management. So uh, one thing I just wanted to recap uh, from Monday, there's two different ways of storing models and files. There's the plan section and the project file selection. So the plans section, just keep in mind, this is for construction-related documents. It is a digital equivalent of the printed set of contact, contract drawings for the project. So when you upload a model, it's going to take a bunch of views and break them out. Or if you take a multi-page PDF, it's going to make all those PDFs into individual documents. So generally speaking, though, when you're working in the model, you know, basically making changes, you want to use the projects file. So this will this is the area where you're supposed to keep all your project related and production data. In addition, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about teams. So teams here, um, that's all going to take place in the project files. But generally speaking, this is our base view and we want to work in the project files. So I guess we can move on to teams. So the idea behind teams is that when you have different disciplines, or if you have different departments, or if you have different locations, each of them can get set up into a team. And the idea is that this allows you a lot of flexibility in terms of linking models and bringing in different models and coordinating. So again, this is just a very normal 
file structure, we could see here we've got our versions. So this is one way of comparing some versions. So let's take a look at four and five. So and we've got our options for different views. So hopefully this is a pair where I made a change. Yeah, so you can see here, a bunch of items were, were modified and it's highlighted those items. So obviously this is very handy if you're trying to figure out what's changed or who has made a change. Uh, you may have to go back to Revit to check the manage models to see who made the the most recent changes, but this lets you know what has actually been done. So very, very handy. So when we're talking about teams, we're mostly working with the design collaboration module. And what this does is it lets you take models and create what are known as packages. So the idea behind a package is that it's sort of taking a snapshot of the project at a specific point in time so that you can then use that to refer to or to link to another model. So let's say, for example, you get to 100% DD and uh, you need to start using, you, you want to take a version of that, make a snapshot, make sure that nobody's going to change what you had exactly at that 100% DD. Again, if we go back to document management, we do have our versions, but looking at these versions, it does, you know, it tells you who did it, but there's no, there's no dates or anything on here. Uh, well, sorry, there are dates, but um, there's, there's no way to kind of go back to this efficiently and freeze it. Whereas if you make a package, you get the model exactly as it was at a certain date. So this up here is a timeline. This one here is the sync that I just made. And this here is a couple of different versions. So let's see if I can find one with some sets and models. All right. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure why it's not showing us. Uh, the sets, since they were put in there. So this again uses the same viewer that we've seen before. We can look at levels. And uh, we have some options in here. All right, here's our sets. So again, you can see there's the 3D views, there's the sheet views, there's the elevations. They're all in here. So you can see this has a little bit less uh, options than the other browser. We'll go back to that in a minute, but you can still get properties for different objects. And this shows you basically all the data that you have in Revit, All right? So you've got your material, base material, and kite, et cetera. So again, you can use this to compare versions. You can use this to, um, to link in models. And when you're doing that, what you would do is every time that a model has been consumed, which means that another team has decided to use it, it goes into this consume folder here. <coughs> and you can use that for links. So another element to consider is that this isn't just for Revit documents. m 360 docs also includes the ability to use other types of files. And you can even view and sometimes edit these files. So this, for example, is uh, Excel. We're browsing it right, <coughs> excuse me, right in the viewer. 
If you have Office 365, you can log into Office 365 and edit right there, and it will be edited simultaneously in real time. So another feature which can be helpful for linking is what is known as the desktop connector. So the desktop connector shows up as a drive in Windows Explorer. So here it is right here. So here's our project. You can see the project files. You can go to construction management and there's our Excel file. Now, one thing to keep in mind, we can go here, we can see, here's, a Rev, here's the Revit model we've been working in. You notice that it's got the version as well. Just keep in mind, you should not, I repeat, not open a Revit model directly through the BIM 360 uh, desktop uh, connector because that could cause a lot of problems. But you can use this to download a copy of the, of the model if you need it. So, uh, so let's go back to BIM 360 Docs. And we can talk a little bit about reviews. So uh, in this case, let's say we want to like this, and we're going to submit for review. All right. So again, um, you can create workflows. You can create your own workflows. One step, two step, three step approval. In this case, let's just do a one step. And you can set this user, do it. We'll have me as the approver. You can set your values. You can set the labels. You can send a copy. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can do with the reviews here. So let's go back to our document management. And here's our model, submit for review. We're going to use the one-step approval. Submit. And it's actually going to send an email to me. You have the option to notify other project members. And there you go. So obviously this is pretty critical when you're working uh, in construction. Similarly, issues, also very important. So one handy thing about the issues module is that you can attach an issue directly to something that is in these views of the model. So here we are with our level one. And let's say I want to create an issue. And I can actually pick a location. And there we go. It's got a little cross there. I can decide who to assign it to. Due date, cause, and basically anyone who looks at this view or looks at this model is going to see this item here. And similarly, creating an RFI, same thing. So if you want some information, we're going to ask Nate. And we want that on Friday as well. And again, that's just right in this view, which is very handy. So um, I think that's pretty much it for, uh, for the core, for the core concepts of BIM 360 design. 
Again, it's all very straightforward. It's all designed so that you can work in Revit and add these, uh, add these features uh, simultaneously, real time, multiple offices. Everything's built right into Revit.